Hello there everyone and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher, da, teacher Dario Del Mundo. And today, we will be having our week number 6, which is our last topic for the second quarter. So, first and foremost, I just want to thank your classmate to lead us in our prayer this morning. Thank you. And uh, Secretary, kindly check the attendance. How many boys and how many girls do we have? Okay, do not forget to send how many attendants do we have today in our group chat? Okay, wag kakalimutan, ha? Then, since this is the last topic for week number 6 of quarter 2, our topic is all about the beneficial and harmful effects of microorganisms. So, pag narinig niyo yung word na microorganism, it talks about, we all know that small living things. So, these are the minute organisms that we cannot see by our naked eyes. So, we are going to talk about yung beneficial and then harmful effects ng mga microorganisms. Pag sinabi natin beneficial, helpful, nakakatulong. Then, harmful, syempre nakakasama. So, yun yung mga bagay na ito topic natin dito. That is why this module is divided into three lessons. Namely, number one, the good and bad bacteria. Lesson number two, protists. Lesson number three, the unique fungi. Start with the looking back. So last time, our topic is all about these different kinds of cells, right? You are familiar with. So, sa tingin nyo, saan kaya sila involved sa topic natin last week? So write what type of reproduction is given in the diagram. So we have here human egg cell, human sperm cell, and then amoeba. Can you tell me what type of reproduction is this one? With these two pictures okay so the correct answer is sexual reproduction how about the other one okay very good that is asexual reproduction so sexual reproduction involves two parents while asexual reproduction involves only one parent very good so for lesson number one we are going to tackle about the good and bad bacteria so as an introduction a microorganism or microbes is tiny living organisms referred as single cells that are invisible to the naked eye. Microbes can be found everywhere, meaning they are on and in our bodies, in the food and water we drink, and in the air we breathe. The use of microscope allows experts to view and study characteristics of microbes. So, uh, syempre, ito dito nagsimula yung uh, pag-discover ng mga microorganisms. When the time ng discovery ng microscope, kasi dun lang nagka-roon ng way para makita yung mga microorganisms na to. And these are some examples of those. Yan. Yung bacteria, and then other like virus. But in virus, we have that kind of imitation. Okay, viruses are considered microorganisms in terms of its size, but the presence of living host limits its characteristics. Bakit kaya? Because when virus leave a living body, it loses all attributes as living things. Kumbaga, for example, ang virus buhay lang kapag nasa loob siya ng living things. For example, ng plant or ng bacteria or ng hayop. Kapag wala na siya doon sa loob ng halaman, ng hayop, or ng animals, automatically, or ng humans, hindi na rin siya buhay. Okay? So, doon siya nagkakaroon ng limit. So, si virus, buhay siya pag nasa loob ng host. Okay? Patay siya or non-living siya kapag outside the host. Okay, let's proceed. And then, bacteria are the simplest of all organisms because its structures possess simple structure and cell organelles. It is surrounded by two protective coverings, the outer cell wall and the inner cell membrane. Some bacteria are also covered by a capsule. Minsan tatlo-tatlo pa yung kanilang covering kaya minsan ang hirap patayin ng bacteria. So some can produce its own food or autotrophic, katulad ng halaman, autotrophic, they can photosynthesize while others are heterotrophic, meaning to say, hindi nila kaya magproduce ng kanilang pagkain. 
they depend on other living organisms for food. So there are bacteria which are being considered as beneficial as well as harmful. There are three basic types of bacteria based on its shapes. Okay, so we have bacilli. Those are the rod shape. We have the cocci or the spherical shape, yung mga round shape. And then we have spirilli, spiral shape. Okay, so yun yung mga shapes ng bacteria at pangalan ng mga bacteria based on their shapes. So, pag sinabi natin bacteria, plural na marami. Pag isa lang, bacterium. Kapag basilay, maraming rod shape. Basilus, isa lang. Okay, cocci, plural, maraming. Kapag naman singular, cocus. Kapag spirilay, plural form. So, kapag ito ay single lang or singular lang ang bacteria na or bacterium na pinag-uusapan natin, ispirila. Okay. Then, how do they differ? So, these types of bacteria based on their shapes. Number one, cocos. Actually, coxa ito dapat kasi madami. Kapag cocos isa lang, basilus isa lang, spirilum isa lang. Okay. So, spherical bacteria are in the shape of little spheres or balls. They usually from or form chains of cells like a row of circles. So, para siyang kadena, di ba? Yung mga pearls yan. Parang gano'n ang itsura niya. Then, we have bacillus, rod-shaped bacteria or capsule-shaped bacteria look like E. coli living in your intestine. You can imagine a bunch of bacteria that look like hot dogs. They can make chains like a set of link sausages. Parang longganisa, yun. Something like that. Then we have spirillum or spirilla. Then uh, these are the spiral-shaped bacteria with a little. Think about balloon animals for these shapes. It's like a balloon animal in the shape of a corkscrew. Okay, so makita na kayo na mga nakadoble na siguro yung tip ng, uh, what do you call this? Tip ng screwdriver. So, ganyan ang itsura niya. Okay, parang makita kayo ng spring, something like that. So, this bacteria can be found everywhere and anywhere. Okay, kahit sa kamagpunta makikita mo to. So, human beings carries millions of tiny living organisms in our body called microbiota. This bacteria can be found in skin, nose, mouth, digestive system, particularly in our gut or intestine. The body's microbiota is present in our body at birth and stabilized during our first years. Changes in the presence of these bacteria happens as we grow depending on the food that we eat. So, pagkasilang mo palang meron ka nakadang bacteria. Pero ito ay nagkakaroon lang siya ng stabilization kapag ikaw ay nagkaroon na ng a year. Okay, tumagal ka na ng one year and so on and so forth. Then, when we grow, we also interact in the environment and medicine we take like antibiotics. The human microbiota is involved in growth, digestion of food, protection against invaders, neutralizes toxins, and some more other reasons. Here are some of the list of the helpful bacteria. Unahin natin yung beneficial effect. So we have Escherichia coli or the E. coli. They can be found in the large intestines. So what are the uses of this uh, E. coli? So it speed up digestion and when surpasses stomach and small intestine, it produces vitamin B12. Okay, next we have Rhizobium species. No juice in the roots of legumes, yung mga mani, ito yun. Ito, example yun. Such as peanut and nakahiya. So, makikita sila sa mga no juice. Parang mga bilog-bilog yun na naka-attach doon sa roots. Bacteria take in nitrogen from the environment and release it for plant. Okay, nitrogen cycle. Then, we have lactobacillus species. Small intestines. At dito sila nakikita. And the users or adequate amount of lactobacillus produces vitamin K which disease, diseases the chance of or decreases sorry decreases the chance of infection eating yogurt or milk process in which lactobacilli is helpful katulad ng mga yakult yan may mga lactobacilli strain then we have 
Bifidobacterium. Bifidobacterium. So they can be found in our stomach as well and intestine. It is another probiotic. Pag sinabi natin mga probiotic, uh, they are beneficial or they have the beneficial effects to humans. That live in intestine and stomach helps in digestion and aid in fighting bad bacteria like Helicobacter pylori and causes that causes ulcer. So, yun yung kanilang ginagawa. Then we have Acidophilus bifidus. Naturally occurring in human body, antibiotics, fermented food, dairy product, and milk and yogurt. Then, the uses of this, they can produce lactic acid and hydrogen peroxide, yung agua oxenada, yan, so which aid in decreasing the number of bacteria, reduce cholesterol levels by breaking down bile, thus restricting its reabsorption. It also prevents bad yeasts like candida albicans, cleanse the bloodstream by removing toxins, thus it boosts the immune system. So, ang dami niyang gamit, di ba? And then, we have cyanobacteria. They can be found in water. So, makita kayo as ng mga as pwedeng swamp, yan, sa mga river, mga, mga lake, may makikita kayo mga cyanobacteria. So, one of the major microscopic producers in bodies of water providing food and oxygen to aquatic organisms. And at the same time, they are the promising source of biodegradable packaging alternative for plastic due to the presence of polyhydroxyalkanoates. So, polyhydroxyalkanoates. So, kasi, di ba yung mga plastics natin, they are not biodegradable. So, kapag gumagamit tayo ng cyanobacteria, they are biodegradable. Okay. Next Microbiota that can be found in humans help us to keep us healthy, but sometimes these bacteria can also be harmful. These harmful bacteria are called pathogens. Tatandaan nyo na, pathogens. Pathogenic bacteria or pathogens. There are factors that increases the risk of infection of pathogenic bacteria as such as age, smoking, obesity, animal fat diet, and exposure to cold temperature. Even the healthiest bodies do battle with pathogens from time to time. There is a need to take good care of our body to avoid development of some diseases, especially yung mga mahilig magkuyat. Yan. So, enough sleep for 8 hours, especially sa mga bata, allowing the body to heal when sick is a must. Eating healthy foods that contribute to the development of the healthy microbiota and strengthening our immune system is important. Reading labels of food purchased from the market is also important to assess the beneficial effect should be part of daily life practices of a consumer like you and me. So here are some lists of pathogenic bacteria and its effect in our body. So ito naman yung mga nakakasama sa atin. Okay, for lesson number two, we are going to talk about protists. So, protists are multicellular organisms that diverse group. Okay, they are very diverse group. Ibig sabihin, napakalawak ng kanilang mga, mga groupings or ng grupo nila. So, diverse group of these includes fungi-like, animal-like, and plant-like. They have different ways on how to get their own food. Some of these are predators, producers, saprophytes and parasites so protists are eukaryotes which mean their cells have a nucleus and other membrane bound organelles it is a single cell organism majority of them are free living in water and this risk pose problem among human when water is not treated like amoebiasis so sounds familiar right so meron tayong example dito which is ayundina so ito yung kanilang structure. Makikita niya meron siyang nucleus. But this cell, one cell, is an entire organism already. Okay? Then, protists are uh, especially alam na alam na natin ito. Minsan siguro na-encounter na natin yung mga sakit na nakakakos nito pero hindi natin uh, uh, namamalaya na 
Because pala siya ng protis, baka alam lang natin virus or bacteria. But there are also protis that uh, can be helpful and can be harmful as well. So number one, malaria. So this is harmful. Malaria carried by a mosquito is caused by protozoa. And this is what a protozoa looks like. This one. Nabubuhay yan sa loob ng mosquito. Okay, next we have diatoms and dinoflagellates are sources of oxygen and food among organisms in water. Ito naman ang itsura ng mga dinoflagellates. They look like an art, right? So, diatoms are very aesthetically and beautifully made to the eye. So, uh, nagkoko sila ng maraming oxygen and sometimes nagiging ano rin sila food source ng mga aquatic organisms. Then we have dinoflagellates. So, dinoflagellates are abundant in water. It causes red tide. Seashells like tahong are not safe to eat during red tide. Okay, because uh, human ate it as a whole, but taking off internal organs of fishes make it safe to be consumed. So, they are divided into three categories. Yung protist nga. We have animal-like, para silang animals ang behavior nila. Plant-like, para silang plants, meaning kasi nakakapag-photosynthesis sila. They can make their own food. Yung animal-like naman, kailangan nilang naghanap ng ibang pagkain. So, fungus-like protease, ito naman, uh, with the uh, combination of fungi. Okay? Then, protease are defined by how they obtain nutrition and how they move. So, kung paano yung kanilang pagkain at kung paano sila kumilos. So, types of protease, number one, fungus-like we have the characteristics, examples, beneficial, and harmful effects. So, fungus-like are unicellular organisms. They are consumers and either saprophytes or parasites. Examples, slime molds and water molds. Then, beneficial effect, cause disease to potato crops. And harmful effect, good decomposers. Then, Uh, by the way, class, this time, uh, itong part na to, baliktad sila. So, beneficial effect niya, they are good decomposers. Harmful effects naman ito is they cause disease or disease to potato crops. So, nagkakos sila ng pagkamatay ng mga patatas. Then, number two, we have animal-like protist or protozoans. So, they are complex organisms and they are consumers. They have special way on how they get their own food, katulad ng mga amoeba. So, examples of these are paramecium uses its cilia for movement. Ito yung malilit na parang buhok. Amoeba uses its false feet and euglena uses its flagellum. So, yung amoeba para siyang may false feet. So, yung isang malaking cell parang gumagalaw lang siya ng gumagalaw. Doon siya, doon siya nag uh, uh, move from one place, one place to another. Si flagellum naman na matatagpuan kay Yubnina, yung parang mahabang buntot na matatagpuan din sa sperm cells. Then, beneficial effect, they give fertility to the soil. Harmful effects, they are parasites that can cause malaria, ayan, amibiasis, and other diseases. Okay? And then, we have plant-like protist can be either multicellular or one-celled organisms. Ang example nito, yung mga lumot sa dagat. Okay, lumot sa dagat. O yung tinatawag natin mga algae, yung mga seaweeds. So, examples of these are brown algae, green algae, red algae, blue-green algae. Yung blue-green algae class, these are the cyanobacteria. So, some algae are edible to eat. So, pwede yung kainin yung ibang algae or algae. And then, yung iba naman, syempre, hindi pwede. Katulad nito ang red tide. Yung nagkakos ng red tide na yan, yung mga algal bloom. Kasi ito ay red algae. Kaya siya red tide kasi galing siya sa red algae. So, yung mga yun, hindi pwede kainit. Okay? Kasi it can cause diseases. And lesson number three, let's talk about fungi or fungus. Pag-isa lang, singular fungus. Kapag marami, plural, fungi. Okay, hindi ito yung sakit kagad sa paa, ha? So, fungi are eukaryotic organisms which cannot produce its own food. 
it's nature of food getting from dead and decaying plants and animals makes it special among other organisms and they are called saprophyte. Pag sinabi natin saprophyte, they feed on dead matter. So it lives in their food source itself where there is moisture and warm temperature in air, water, soil, plants, and animals like us. Alexander Fleming developed the very first antibiotics from penicillium, ito yung penicillin. So, species of molds, actually white molds. So, nakita niya na yung mga bacteria na nasa petri dish niya, naiwan niya sa, iwan niya lang yun sa may bintana. And accidentally, may tumubo na kulay puti na amag. At yung kulay puti na amag ngayon are penicillium. Okay, na ginawa ngayon penicillin. Kaya ito yung naging antibiotic. Ibig sabihin, pamatay ng bacteria. So, fungi generally help the environment to recycle nutrients as decomposers. So, sila yung mga uh, nagdi-decompose ng mga animals din, especially sa mga woods, sa mga log. Okay, so this one is a mushroom, which is a type of fungi. And we have yeast. These are the yeast cells, microscopic. So, eto macroscopic, eto microscopic. Okay, these cells are microscopic and they are also fungi. So fungi also have many types. So it exists in various colors like red, orange, white, green, black, and brown. And they are abundant in the environment and has an essential role in the ecosystem as decomposer. Sobrang importante niyan. And recycling nutrients by breaking down organic materials into simple molecules. Napaka-colorful nila. But sometimes, the most colorful to the eyes are poisonous. Okay, so, delikado. So, some fungi are parasitic. They are specialized to penetrate a host and break down the host tissues and eventually damage sila. Ito yung mga harmful effects niya mamaya. Magbibigit ang example. So, ang mga mushrooms, glass, may mga pinakaing mushrooms, may mga hindi rin naman. So, yung mga kabute, di ba? So, usually, glass, yung mga white, brown, and medyo darker color ng uh, mushroom yung tengang daga. Yan, so, usually, yung kinakain. Pero yung sometimes yellow, red, yung mga brighter colors na mushroom, at yung mga hindi kinakain, sometimes they are the very poisonous one. So, ingat-ingat. Looks can be deceiving. So, ito yung mga tengang daga. Yan. Inyalagay sa pansit, sa niluluto, minsan. So, that is also a type of mushroom or fungi. And then, next, ito na. So, fungal infection are common in humans and are usually not very serious if they are treated quickly and correctly. Most fungal skin infections can be treated with over-the-counter or prescription creams. So, ito yung mga uh, prescription creams na pwede nyo mabili yung ano, uh, sa Pfizer, di ba? Yung pangtanggal ng, uh, yung cream na um, pwede natin uh, pangtanggal ng fungal infection. Pwede rin yung mga sulfur-based soap. So, kung may mga sulfur-based soap kayo na alam. And then yung, uh, pwede rin yung kachalis. Ayan, kasi yung kachalis sulfur cream naman siya. So, pwede yun gamitin dyan. And then, pwede rin siyang bilhin over the counter. But severe infections may require additional methods. Taking preventive action can go a long way towards avoiding fungal skin infection as well. It is always best to notify a doctor at the first sign of infection to avoid possibly serious complications. By working directly with a doctor, most cases of fungal skin infections can be easily treated. Okay, at yung example, ringworm. Sobrang cutting ito, class. So, ang ringworm na to, pwede yung tumubo kahit sa ang parte ng katawan mo. So, uh, might as well, huwag kayo nanghihiram ng gamit, especially ang uh, tuwalya or gamit niya. Baka mamaya, meron ka rin para siya ng ringworm. Okay? Nagamit niya. So, pwede pumunta sa inyo yan. At nanganganak yan ang nanganganak. Dadami ng dadami yan. And then, dandruff. Yung ating uh, nasa buhok, yung nasa anit na nakanikit natin. Okay? Yung balang ubak natin is also caused by fungal infection. Singaw sa bilin natin. Athlete's foot. Okay. Okay, and many more. Had-had. Ayan. Yung athlete's foot, iba yung kalipungan. Okay, marami pang iba. Okay. 
So these are the things to remember. Number one, microorganisms are tiny and simple creatures that can only be seen under the microscope. It is classified into three shapes, especially bacteria. We have spherical, yung cocoi natin or cocci. Yung rod shape natin or yung capsule shape, which are the bacillus or bacilli. And spiral, which are the spirillum or spirilla. Next, number two, some examples of microorganisms are bacteria, fungi, and protists. They can be beneficial or harmful. Number three, fungi are eukaryotic organisms that cannot produce its own food. They can be beneficial or harmful as well. Kaya sila tinatawag na saprophytes. Okay? Kasi they cannot produce their own food and they feed on dead matter. Number four, mushroom and yeast are common fungi used in food industry while they can damage crops and spoil foods easily. So, mabilis din makahanin sa isang pagkain dahil ay kakaroon ng mga fungi. Then, fungi are classified based on the shapes of their sporangia and even the structure of the sporangia, yung mga spores nila sa ilalim. Okay? Where spores are produced. Kasi, dun sila nagpaparamin sa mga spores na yun. And number six, they are always or there are ways to take care of the body against diseases caused by pathogens such as enough sleep, proper diet, and avoid vices like smoking and drinking alcohol. So if you do not have any questions, do not forget to watch and rewatch the video and then answer all the questions in your module for your lesson number one, answer pages number four, seven, eight, and nine for the part B. And then for lesson number two, answer page 10. For lesson number three, answer pages 12 to 30. So if you do not have any questions and if you want to ask something, you can reach me to my social media accounts, especially to our GC. Okay, so do not forget that. And that's the end of our quarter two, week number six. And see you on the third quarter. Have a nice day and God bless you all.